break my neck. Do we have a new opening? <laughs> All right, Miles. Yeah, I heard the music. <laughs> Welcome everyone tonight it, to the Selectman's meeting. It is Monday, March 24th, 7.15 p.m. for our regular meeting. I just want to remind everybody that this meeting is being cablecast on ACMI and may be recorded by other people in the audience for replay or use later. Uh, first up, we have an agenda. It is uh, on the agenda, excuse me, is a proclamation. Uh, April is Autism Awareness Month. And uh, Mrs. Mahan is brought this to our attention and we've done it several years in a row and so I'd like to read the pro proclamation. Whereas autism is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social, learning, and behavioral skills of those affected by it, and whereas autism was once thought to be a relatively rare disorder affecting only one in 10,000 people, and whereas as more and more health professions become proficient in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the autistic spectrum resulting in rates as high as one in 50 children. And whereas there is no cure for autism, it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive treatment early in their lives, it is often possible for those individuals to lead significantly improved lives. And whereas Autism Speaks and others are spearheading an awareness effort in order to educate parents, elected officials, professionals, and the general public about autism and its effect, effects. Now, Therefore, be it resolved that we, as the members of the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim April as Autism Awareness Month in the town of Arlington and urge all employees and residents to participate in our municipality's Autism Awareness Month activities, including the Light It Up Blue Night, in order to become better educated on the subject of autistic spectrum disorders. It is signed by us all. So moved. Second. Motion. Second. Further discussion? Mrs. Mahan. I just want to thank my colleagues for doing this for many years, and when we had um, and Butler and others yeah. yes. Cancer Awareness Month, um, similar to the road that they were beginning is what Autism Speaks, and this issue started 10, 15 years ago. We started out, some people say, How, why read these proclamations? But they really are an important piece. Sometimes it's, they're really important for people who are sitting at home who have just heard about the diagnosis with a 15-month-old, a 24-month-old and don't know what to do, and that's where they might hear, oh, the organization I can tap into is Autism Speak. It, this, the town that I live in is aware of this, so I can call these elected officials, I can call the, the town manager's office, and it, it's really important, and it, it does help um, all these proclamations get submitted to the Massachusetts chapter of Autism Speak, and it really helps them when they're down in Washington, because we're just now starting to get money and funding for not only more research, but when these young children become young adults at 22, basically there's next to nothing out there. But because of the awareness and, and Autism Speaks and grassroots efforts, that's really starting to change. And I'm hoping right now Minuteman does have programs up there as well as our lab collaborative, but I'm hoping with wh whatever new rebuild at Arlington High School, I know we'll all keep this as a possibility, knowing that the school committee and the MSBA have to guide it. But um, I can tell you, any parent of an autistic child would love to have their children stay in the city or town. And I know we're, we'd all like to make that happen. So thank you very much. Ms. Really, uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mrs. Mahan. Uh, thank you both. Diane, remind me, what's the light, the light detail? The lighted up blue? Yeah, what is that? Um, I, I think it's April 4th. It's April a Friday. 4th. Um, what they do all across the, the world, not just in um, USA, Australia, Australia, everywhere. Um, different buildings, like the crew in Boston, you know how they light up a certain floor for the Red Sox, they light it up blue, because blue is the color, you've seen the ribbon, but blue is also the color for this particular night. But aren't we supposed to do something in our homes for the, you, you, and is it a blue light in the window? It's a blue window? light, um, Wanamaker, Shattuck, I'm sure, you know, Home Depot and others have it. Um, okay. And it's just, again, just a okay. lot of it is, what they're hoping is on the grander scheme that if you see a building, you ask the next day, and it makes people aware, as well as light. your neighbors. You know, why did you put a blue light outside? You know, is it easy, is it less expensive? So it's another way of outreach. Yep. 
Thank you. All, all right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, <coughs> excuse me, is our consent agenda. Uh, we have the minutes of our meeting from March 10th, and we, we have a request for a one-day beer and wine license for uh, at Robbins uh, Town, uh, excuse me, in the Town Hall Auditorium for the Cambridge Art Association 2014 Gala. Move is approval. There, we have a motion. Second. A second. Is there anyone from the gala who wishes to speak? Going once, twice, all right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It is approved. Next up, Farmer's Market. Patsy. Hi, thank you for having me. So I have my Farmer's Market hat on tonight and asking for your approval for the Farmer's Market to be held this summer in the Russell Common parking lot. And I'm also asking for your approval for a program that we piloted last year, which was a seasonal parking pass program. Uh, it, and it was very successful. People were very grateful for it. Uh, we charged $10 for the season, um, and they were given a certificate that they put in their windshield uh, so that they didn't get a ticket. Uh, and people were eternally grateful that they did not have to stand in line at those god-awful parking machines. Um, I'm expecting 25 vendors this year. Uh, Twelve of them are farms, and that's one of the really good things about our farmer's market is that we are anchored by so many farms, because it is a farmer's market. It isn't a crafts fair, and it isn't a, uh, you know, uh, like a deli place, so we're very proud of that. Uh, we also have three wine vendors, and we have a different vendor each week. Two of them are regular wine vendors, and then there's one that sells what's called apple ice wine which is a wine that's made from frozen apple, and I have to tell you, it is delicious. It's great <laughs> to buy for Thanksgiving. Um, we also have two cheese vendors, and this year our new vendor is smoked fish. So if you're a fan of smoked bluefish, come to the farmer's market. Does so that go with apple wine? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you will see fit to approve it. It's, uh, the farmer's market is very successful. We really have the hundreds of people that come every week, and I feel like we add to the business community in town. Kevin? Yeah, uh, move approval and thank Patsy for the work that um, she's done on this. I'm sure everybody, the thousands watching at home, recognize Patsy. She's the pianist for the select tones. <laughs> and, uh, when we get standing ovations, it's because of her. But um, another project Patsy has taken on and uh, done an excellent job with. Thank you very much. I'll second the motion. And I'll, I'll just say, again, you know, thank you very much. The, um, you know, even though we hear sometimes from some of the merchants in the center, they get concerned about uh, the parking supply. I think this is one exception to it because they realize that in addition to people coming and visiting the farmer's market, a lot of them are also going and visiting the, yeah, the shops and, and restaurants yeah. as well. So I think it's a great uh, benefit to the center. So, uh, so thank you. The only thing I'd note is that, um, you know, next year we're, we're in the middle of this this par center parking study, so I, I feel comfortable approving the request to, to continue uh, what we started as a pilot last year, but I, I would think that next year we're going to have to look at it within the scope of the, the overall, whatever whatever recommendations come down, and I think we're getting those in a, okay. another month or so, but... Um, um, you know, actually, I have a question, too. I, I had understood that the infrastructure work that was being done in front of the police station was, in t was eventually going to go all up and through the parking lot, is that true? Is that gonna be an issue I need to be concerned about in another year or so? It's not, it won't yeah, be in the parking I've lot. not heard anything going through the parking okay, lot. Okay, good. Yeah. I will echo exactly what Joe said, that I'm happy to approve the parking change this year, but I'm <laughs> hopeful that we won't need it next year. And uh, yeah. the, it's, uh, the, the parking consultants are giving their recommendations to us on April 7th. And so, th and I know that the farmer's market was one of the things that they were talking about and considering, so uh, I definitely would encourage you to keep an eye on that and weigh in as, okay. as that goes okay, along. Okay, we'll do. Great. Okay, thank you very Any much. Further discussion? Hmm? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Hope thank you, you Patsy. Come. Thanks, Mike. Thank Joe. you. Apple wine, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at apple wine. <laughs> Next up, we've got the uh, Arlington Council on Aging approving a race for this coming September, which is the annual Friends a Council on Aging 5K Road Race. Art Budnick. Welcome. Thank you for coming up with us again this year. We're delighted. I you. noticed the running contingents over to this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, and, and oh, Mr. Oh, Chaplain. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> you you just never see him with us because he's so far ahead. <laughs> Listen, I drove it. You're not counting that? that, that uh, I went from start to finish. But, you know. No, but uh, actually, I appreciate the participation and, and the community does, and we try and outreach. And I, there's a word I use in reference to the race, and it's becoming more and more true, and I'm, I'm very happy about it, intergenerational. Mm -hmm. there, there is a wide range from younger children running all the way up to our last winner, la our winner last year that was the oldest was 84 years old in his category and stuff. And uh, so it, it, it's getting there in general. And uh, we try and get a lot of community involvement, a lot of the businesses are participating more and more. <coughs> And uh, we get to collect some funds that we then can donate over to the Council on Aging and Susan Clark. And again, last year for our seniors in general, we were able to generate and donate $10,000, over $10,000 actually. There's the little stocking gift holiday program we started to put together. And uh, that this year we have put in over $2,500 into that. And again, we've made a donation to many of Susan's programs that she'll be talking to you about. And that was in the range of 8,000 or so. And so it's, it's, we're able to help and, and, and whatnot. And so and <laughs> some of your programs. Yeah, some of the pro I'd just like to clarify that. Um, do, do me a favor and step a little closer to the mic because we've been having some audio issues. And so if you get closer, it'll help us out. Thank you. That way as well. Thank you. This is act the event is actually, um, for the Friends of Arlington Council on Aging. Certainly, um, the Friends support all the efforts of the Council on Aging, which we're very grateful. As Art was talking about, he mentioned the, the little stocking stuffer program. Well, it's not really so little. Um, it reaches about 75 um, homebound or frail or isolated um, seniors in Arlington. Um, these stockings are put together with care uh, by different community members, uh, so it is also intergenerational. You have families, we have um, the Arlington Police Department as well as a whole host of other volunteers that actually go door to door to deliver these um, little stocking stuffers. So it, it's actually quite a large program. The other kinds of things that we benefit from directly um, in the Council on Aging are programs that are you know, health and wellness based. Um, these programs can run anywhere from six to, tw uh, six to 12 weeks. And we can have about 18 people that will sign up for these programs and be there from the beginning to the end. So they're, they're interesting, um, informative, and people are wanting them, you know, hand over foot. So we don't have, I think when we first started it, it would, it would take about three months to get maybe eight people registered. Now we get them in our newsletter, and within the first month people are registering and, you know, the coffers are full day one. Uh, we also run some of the emergency financial assistance programs. Um, Minuteman Senior Services that are our right arm in um, Council on Aging, that's, uh, their income levels are much lower, but there are many people that are just above that that still have financial needs. So through the help of all the funds that are generated through these programs, we're able to offer emergency assistance. Uh, most oftentimes it can be uh, fuel assistance, some med medical kinds of things, um, you know, sometimes even an emergency repair that other services can't come together with. And um, we're also working on an emergency, um, an emergency disaster plan uh, because we believe that we have to prepare ourselves so that we can be strong community members so that we don't necessarily rely um, on other services in town. And uh, through a special fund and through the Friends of Arlington Council on Aging and through our nurse with his background in emergency preparedness as well as what the town is planning, we're starting to work with those that are 90 and over. Mm -hmm. So with the nurse interns that we have from UMass Boston as well as Northeastern, um, we're capitalizing on their experience, uh, their clinical experience as well to get into the houses and to, uh, to really see what's going on. So the Arlington Council on Aging really benefits um, as an organization, but the end user, the senior of Arlington, which as you've heard us say before, is about 23% of the total population, um, are beginning to receive more services as a result of the kindness of many and the support of the selectmen in the town. So I'd like to say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And one last thing. 
And this is for Adam's benefit, since he likes to run the race as much as he does. We are uh, seriously considering USATF certification for this year, and we're, we want to really build it into a well-attended uh, and a, a, a very sincere race, basically. A, so we will be pursuing that stuff, and we'll improve. And any ideas anyone has, get it to us, and we'll be pursuing that and try and refine the race <coughs> as much as we can. Kevin? I just I wondered whether, um, Adam, did you want to issue any challenges uh, <laughs> this year? I think if you lose, you buy the town lunch. Or the something. whole town, I yeah. The, uh, <laughs> every employee <laughs> lunch. I forget what it is. What is it that you challenge on this? Uh, well, the first year I, I, I issued the challenge was any town employee who beat me, I'd buy lunch. And I was beaten <laughs> by, by lunch. I, and I, I, I probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably right. But I, I think. Uh, I think he was only beaten by one. Was right? beaten by one, but he he ran up the bill pretty well. <laughs> 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 if I remember right, that that was someone from the fire. It department. was. It was Brendan Gormley from the fire department. Yeah, yeah. but he brought his whole fire engine. Yeah. So I know. We, we were talking about this year, though. Anything you want to? I think uh, John Waller from Arlington Patch has gotten for me. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I think it's wonderful you ran in and supported. Uh, move approval. Second. Motion to second. Um, I had two comments. So first off, uh, one is, so the path is on the Minuteman bike path. Most it, of it. Most of it, yeah. <laughs> so we actually, in the li uh, since you ran this last, uh, um, we ba uh, the town manager now manages the bike path and the approvals on the bike path. Am I, do I do remember we, correctly? We have actually never finalized that. Oh, uh, really? Oh, uh, okay. So we we discussed it, but we didn't actually pull the trigger on it. There we go. Okay. Uh, and uh, one thing, was, any, what are the hours on it? Because I I do worry. Anytime there's anything on the bike path, I worry about because it's obviously a very highly used. Yeah, we always we have been having the race on uh, Sundays yeah. in September, and it's going to be September seventh. It will start. The race will begin at ten a.m. and uh, the runners are through within. A 20, 30 minutes at the most along the path and everything like that. Celebration ends by about 1 o'clock at the most. Um, registration begins at Town Hall in yeah. front of Town Hall at about 9 a.m. So it, 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 it goes by very quickly in, in general. Okay. And I, I Joe? Just having, and I, I think Adam and Steve have both yeah. having participated in it, the, the path portion is actually the second half, yeah. so you actually run Mass Ave all the way down to East, mm -hmm. East Arlington and through uh, Thorndike. So it's really just the, it's the section from Thorndike um, yeah. up to the, uh, the Spy Pond Park. Down by Spy Pond, yeah. Yeah, down, by, down by Spy Pond. As a result, inevitably people are kind of spread out, so they're not, it's not a big they, mass yeah, that's so coming on the folks that want to go down. Uh, cool. All right. And uh, my second thing was on the emergency preparedness uh, evacuation. Uh, are you coordinating with Chief Jefferson as well on that? It's all. The answer is it's being coordinated on all levels. Okay. Good. It, it's not an evacu. It's not an evacuation plan. The front side of it is my my personal plan. Yeah. So in in essence, um, if a first responder walks into a home. Mm -hmm like the file of life, the vial of life, all the current information is on the front. On the back, it's teaching the individual items that they need to have in the event that there's an emergency or an evacuation. Mm -hmm. So it isn't an evacuation route. Okay. It's, it's not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. It's basically taking the two pieces of personal preparedness. Yeah. In case of an emergency, this is who you need to call on my behalf. On the other side of it, it's something that these are the things that I need to prepare for in the event I need to leave mm -hmm. quickly. And with the friends, we not only designed it, it was designed with FEMA, uh, FEMA MEMA. So I guess, uh, I, I'm, I just, my only point is, is that when there's an emergency in town, right. we all take our marching orders from Chief Jefferson. Absolutely. And so I just want to make sure that he's aware of, and it can, you know, that, yeah, you know what I'm trying to get I at. I do. Okay. I do. Joe? Well, I did, and um, just to support Susan in this, I want to note that um, she's, participated in some of the local emergency planning Good. activities, including about a month ago, there was a training for, um, in the event that the town ever had to establish a sheltering operation uh, with a, a major disaster, and I know the Council on Aging worked Great. with several of your staff to do that. Great. So. Cool. <coughs> uh, so. No, this is always a fun, uh, fun Sunday, and uh, 
generally about the, I think it's generally the first Sunday of the NFL season, so, so it's important. <laughs> that you, it's important that you run it quickly. Um, and uh, although I will say we're still running uphill at the end. I thought we were going to reverse the order for this year, so we could start downhill and just have an easy, simple path home. We, we refer to it as a fairly flat course. <laughs> fairly, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but this is a great run, and uh, it's a really nice day, and I hope. Uh, I urge everyone to get involved. It's really, uh, it's really great, and you obviously support some great programs in town. So thank you. So did you, you two beat Adam last year? No. What? No. I hung back in case they had an accident and needed some support. <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you two get into training, please? <laughs> Is there any further questions or comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. Thank you both very thank much. Thank you both. Next up, we have an appointment to the Arlington, soon to be renamed Cultural Commission, Carla M. Dorado. Carla, are you here? Come on up. Welcome. Thank you very much for volunteering. Thank you. Uh, and could you just share with us just a minute about uh, what brings you here and what has you excited about the Cultural Commission? Well, I was approached by Adria Arch, and she was looking for someone to sort of be a liaison between the business community and the artistic community in the town. And uh, I think some of you know me, I have the Artful Heart Gallery, and I've been involved with many town things, PTO, I've been heavily involved with a lot of other places like Right Turn, volunteering with them, I, with the Mystic Corral here in Arlington, so I have a lot of affiliations. And as far as the business community, uh, besides my own, I was a manager for Floor Restaurant for quite a while, and so I sort of cross paths with a, a lot of ends here. Thank you. Diane? Uh, first, I'd like to move approval. Um, Second. Second, I want to make a disclosure that I found Carla as one of my dearest friends. Mm -hmm. um, I can attest to the fact that she and the rest of her family, her sister and others, uh, are very involved in the arts and, and cultural awareness. And I'm blanking on, I know it's going to be ACAC, but what that new um, uh, acronym is going to be for this group. And there's been a lot of events here in Arlington, um, especially around Right Turn, which I really knew nothing about um, and thought that was one of the things. I see Right Turn, I thought it was one thing. Um, so completely different organization that really is unique to Arlington. It's still, I believe, right over here on Mass Ave it is. Um, to my right. And I'm not sure if it's getting it home to your right or left, <laughs> but it is right turn. And um, I've heard about it not only across <coughs> the state, but I've also started to hear <coughs> other people <coughs> sort of doing similar functions in the region. Um, so mm -hmm. because of that and all your commitment to that, and just knowing you personally, and I've gotten to sing with her sometimes around Christmas time, and I've been able to go to her house, not her house. Um, and I'm thrilled that you're doing this, and I know you're going <coughs> to give it 150% like I'm you do with everything I'm very excited. Else. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. I've also gotten to know Carla through her, um, her active participation in the Center Merchants Group, and she was a strong supporter of the Arlington Live uh, block party as well last summer, so I'm, I'm very happy to uh, support her, her nomination to the Thank commission. you. Kevin? So, um, Carla, I'd like to get to know you better. Sorry <laughs> that yeah. I'm the only one here. That, oh, you're lucky my boyfriend's in Vegas. But did I hear Mr. Corral as in you like to sing? Did I hear that? I do like to sing, Have you yes. ever heard of the select? <laughs> no. Well, I they're actually more well-known than the Mr. Corral. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. You know. Are they well-known or are they infamous? <laughs> yeah, yeah, infamous, yeah. They're famous in their own. No. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Great background. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any further? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we have... Um, oh, shoot. Point? Thank you. Uh, Amy Taberner. Yes. I blew it. I know. I saw her come. Thank you very much, Diane. No, no. I apologize. I read the first name, and for some reason, I stopped reading. Hey. Amy Taberner, That's welcome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. What brings you, uh, what, what, what makes you excited <laughs> what about, and, uh, what, what makes you excited about the Cultural Commission? Um, I have been serving as co-chair of the Cyrus Bowery, uh, Cyrus Gallon Art Museum become increasingly more involved in other cultural organizations throughout the town and would like to continue to do so um, and make sure that the town's historic and cultural and artistic amenities are, um, are nurtured and cared for and are part of um, the broader town of Mass Ave. Um, um, I'm personally um, an art historian and a historian and I'm very interested in Arlington's history and I didn't bring one for everyone but 
uh, Dorian Stevens taught previously at the Historic Society, and Sarah Burks and I just finished our recent publication, so I thought I'd um, bring Frank here um, on Arlington's history of 1900 to 1925, so, um, and that was a, a grant from the Cultural Council. So oh, wow. Great, thanks. thanks. Thank you very much. I move uh, approval. Uh, sorry. Second. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> Joe, of course. Second. Joe? Uh, yeah. Do you want to go, Joe? Or is that? I move Kevin's on. very happy to support. So, do you sing? I don't. <laughs> no. Uh, maybe a little, but not. I, I need to withdraw my second. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, uh, thank you for your willingness to serve and, okay. and the service you've already provided the town. Arlington's cultural height. So, are you saying that between 1900 and 1925, that was the the height of I'm culture in Arlington? I'm a, I think that- I'm just curious, I haven't- Many of the cultural amenities that we enjoy today, the Friends of the Drama, um, this town hall, the park, we, it stems from the people that were living in the town and their generosity and their civic, civically minded attitude and dedication. Mm -hmm. um, we were very interested, in, obviously, in Victoria Town and, and Cyrus Town and, yeah, and their involvement in, um, in town, which was, we, Cyrus served on the planning board and Victoria was involved in, in many town um, organizations that formed um, the Friends of the Drama. So we just found out more and more information about their neighbors and the uh, group of artistic people that lived around them. And this, you know, the book is really about what brought um, such creatively and civically minded uh, incredible people to the Arlington Heights area, but also to the Crescent Hill area. It has two uh, simultaneous but, uh, but very different stories. And if I may, two more questions. So where can people get this? Uh, they can purchase it at the museum, okay. uh, at the Cyrus Allen Art Museum, but it's also at the book, book rack and um, fire, uh, it's Splendid Fire. Splendid Divinity Glow. Firefly Moon. Firefly Moon. Thank you so much. I, uh, <laughs> exactly. Up in the high school. Five points. At the book rack and at the I think that the Historic Society also has some to sell as well. Good. Not to take up too much, but are you now going to do from 1925 to 1950? Are you going to do other 25 year periods or? Uh, I'm going to take a break from writing. <laughs> 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 this is an enormous endeavor, but there sure. is a lot more to cover. The I'm town sure. has an amazing legacy, and it's not just the um, revolutionary period, although I feel like that is certainly right. a period of time that de deserves greater attention in our town. So. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Thank you all. Anything else? Fran? Oh, well, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you. You've already been helping us um, in other capacities and, and stepping up for this position. I'm really excited in terms of um, whatever you can bring from the Harvard Graduate School of Design. I see that you oversee. One of the things I think the town of Arlington has been really successful with is fostering with some of the teaching institutions, uh, sometimes around, you know, uh, stormwater, ma stormwater management. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, students or graduate students will say, I need to come out and, and do stuff like that, as well as I'm really impressed that you've overseen the lecture se series, um, besides being an author of the... Um, yeah, it's um, 12 years at, at Harvard DOT. I've done, it, or 11 years, I've done a little bit of everything. And I know yes. a lot of... A lot of practitioners in the design field that may be, may be useful. Yeah, I'm th I know you're going to bring a lot to the cultural table that uh, I hope so. we wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, food vendor license. Raymond P. Laum, Liam, uh, Sims Mini Mart. Come on up. And please help me pronounce your last name so I don't do that again. Laham, I apologize. So you, uh, I read this and yet I already forgot what it is. You're taking over, you're buying the, the existing. Business from my uncles, yes. Excellent. And, and otherwise no changes, right? No changes. And you promise not to move because town meeting could not be held if no, people no can't movement. walk across the street no to movement. your place at the break. Yeah. No move move uh, approval. And uh, thank you for your many years of service already and look forward to many years thank more. You. Second. Uh, second by Steve. Is that in? Although you haven't, excuse me, you haven't yet sold me a winning lottery ticket. <laughs> I just it will come. It will okay, come. that's good. <laughs> and since I'm asking everybody, do you sing, Raymond? No, I do not. Okay, no, I do not. Um, 
I'm thrilled that this is staying in the family. Um, one of the things, when I was in high school, from my freshman to senior year, I worked three jobs, the library, um, waitressing, and at Sims Mini Mart. I remember really? getting in there at 6.30 in the morning, and I would do the guy's work, loading the milk with Jack <laughs> and with his cigar yes, he still up, talks in, about up in you, his yes. castle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, I think I would say the money person that kept us all in line was Donald. Um, so I'm thrilled that it's staying in the family because just, uh, and Jack continues on to this day, not just with teenagers, you know, when they apply, but sometimes working moms, you know, I've, I've gone back down there over the years. I really missed that job because I loved it a lot. <laughs> and I, w I would go back to it in a heartbeat if I could. And Sims Mini Mart has been here for so long and it's done so much. Um, I say thank you for um, continuing on with your family tradition. Oh, thank you. Perfect. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. All right. Next up, um, Arlington High School statement of interest to the MSBA. So we all had a hearing two weeks ago, and uh, we made a motion. That we made our intent very clear, but we have some paperwork to go through to actually put it in the form to make sure the MSBA is happy. And I noticed, uh, Marie, that we had a version in our packet, and I've got another one on my desk. Is there something I need to know? The one that's on the desk is dated submission date 324. So that's going to be. Yeah, OK, so that's today. But All right. The mission statement is this afternoon. OK. So working on the packet that was on our desk. Joe? Yeah, Kevin. So it, this is the motion, it's, it's a st yep. statement of interest? <clears throat> it is? OK. Uh, therefore, Mr. Chairman, I move. Uh, resolved having convened in an open meeting on March 24th, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Arlington, Mass, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated March 26, 2014, for the Arlington High School located at 869 Massachusetts Avenue, Arlington, Mass., which describes and explains the following dis deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority three, prevention of the loss of accreditation. Pri priority four, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollments. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. Priority seven, replacement of or in, ad or in addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority and I move, sir, that you sign that on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Second. second Joe. Second. So I, I second it. I'm sorry it was long, but, but we had to. Yeah, we had to. Back. We had to. Now, I, I had been concerned when I <coughs> saw this in our packets before, and I, I consulted with town council because um, we were voting on March 24th, something that's dated March 26th, two days in the future. And I guess town council had confirmed with the MSBA that that's, that is fine. But now I have the question again, because what we have on the desk now tonight is dated March 24th. Is this still a draft? Can I, or is, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, it's dated today. I'm assuming it's because the system probably generates current day date. It can't be submitted today. My understanding is still that they would be dating the actual submission. Now that this vote's been taken I do see it March says 26. draft on it, but I, yeah. okay. And I, I just would add that um, after consultation with the MSBA authorities, um, as well as my own reading of this, as long as they submit it on dated March 26th or later, it'll be fine. It's your authorization that's basically being, you know, put before you now. Um, gotcha. In theory, they could have drafted it so that it said honor before April 11th, which I believe is the cutoff date. 
but they drafted it with a specific date, and so they've got to do it on or after that date. I see. Okay. Thank you. Diane? And, and could, could I, to Mr. Carroll's point, um, I think what he was saying is the submission date, that that will be through 26, 14, instead of what we have here before us. I'm not sure if that's what you just said or not. But like someone will coordinate with um, Diane Johnson or whomever to change. I know right now it's a sample draft, but um, just to make sure that we're following what every. We can do that. Okay. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Five zero. Next up, rehearing on Article 21. Um, so a month ago now, we all as a group, we voted to endorse the new, uh, or the, the draft regional agreement that was proposed by the school committee. Uh, Minuteman District, the school committee in particular, got cold feet and worried that they were going, and of course for this to go through, it has to be approved by all 16 towns and they got scared that some of the smaller towns were not going to approve this, and so they agreed to one of the changes that was being driven. Uh, my reading of the tea leaves, it was Lincoln, you know, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, but it wasn't just them. Um, and so they changed the weighting such that Arlington's vote is, so the voting is no longer, like, so in today's agreement, the one we're under today, it's 1 16th every time. In the agreement that we voted a month ago, it was weighted by uh, a four-year running average of students, and, it w w and the weighted votes don't apply to everything, but they do apply. But they apply to some things. This version that we're being asked to approve today is uh, between the two. Half of the vote is one sixteenth, and half of the vote is weighted, which, as you saw in our packet, has the practical effect of changing our uh, vote. In the, like, if the if this was in the in place today we would have roughly 20% of the voting power as opposed to a third. And as a practical matter, what that means is to block a budget, uh, you'd need five towns rather than three towns. It used to be just Lexington, Belmont, or Arlington, Lexington, Belmont could do it. Now you need Lexington, Arlington, Belmont, plus pick two of the next four uh, to block a budget. So uh, in, in balance, um, I'm very frustrated with the process, but I still think that this is the better agreement than, and I think that we should Supported on town meeting floor. Uh, Adam, did you? What did I forget? I, uh, I think you hit it. You hit it right on. And I, and I think it's important to acknowledge that it is frustrating the way the process went, um, but it certainly gets us still to a much better position than the, the current agreement does, and, that, and that's the balance to consider. And I will actually just make one more addition because one of the things I know that keeps coming up is. Uh, that's a legitimate, is that the school building that they're currently looking at building would be an 800 person school and Arlington's capital punishment if we were to build an 800 person school would be more than we could afford. And this does not mean that we're going to pay for that school and we will still not pay for that school until there's a better financial agreement. And I just want to, in my mind, that those are distinctly separate issues and this just gets us closer to building a school that we can afford as opposed to the, the current proposal. And I do not want anyone to construe this vote as a, yes, we should go build that 800-person school on Arlington's dime, yeah. because it ain't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, in fact, if we pass this and the other communities pass it, it means that we actually do have an out if, if there is a, ca a capital expenditure that we don't agree with. But I, I was with uh, the chairman um, out at uh, Minuteman when this was dropped on us. I, I think we, we both... Um, fairly well vented our spleens and succeeded in somewhat blowing up the meeting <laughs> um, because th this was quite a surprise. Now, one of the, the concerns that was expressed um, uh, by, by one of the presenters there was that um, they could be prevented from carrying on business if the three largest communities didn't come. So they're trying to balance that. Um, <clears throat> I did the math going from the bottom up looking at the weighted voting shares and it looks like they could theoretically do some things um, without the three largest communities of this. That having been said, um, when I go back to it, I think when we discussed this last month, I, I kind of equated the, the um, compromise to the, the, the compromise of a bicameral legislature. And if I'm honest, this really is more purely you know, derived from that same principle of balancing the small and large interests. 
I'm not happy with the way it went. We, we explained, do you we, we said very clearly, do you understand that some communities have already heard this <laughs> and are ready to put this before town meeting as it was presented, but um, so we, we were heard. But I, I think we do have to uh, pass this. So it's adopting these changes with exit clauses and the ability to opt out of the capital expenditures is really a much better deal for Arlington than what we're getting right now. Uh, so uh, did your motion was made well action judge I'm sorry yes, yes. So we yeah. don't yeah. Yeah. We, we don't actually have a motion but I'm going to call uh, sorry oh, Steve, Steve, Steve was ready to go do, how do you do you have a sense of what the other communities are thinking about this you know it's fascinating to watch and Adam probably gets more back channel stuff you know, in the know back Adam gets more back channel stuff than I do um, you can <laughs> see Lincoln sweating it but at the same time they no one wants to be the one that says no Boxborough hates it because it includes the wealth factor, and they hate the wealth factor because it once Boxborough was listed as the most wealthy town in Massachusetts, which they do not think is true. Mm -hmm. And so they hate ha anything that's attached to the wealth factor. Sudbury hates it for other reasons because they want to get out of it, and they think that by voting against the way to get out of it, they can get out. They can't, you know, don't. Ex yeah. Well, it doesn't make any sense as far as I can tell. So, Lincoln is the first vote on Monday. Oh, sorry, Saturday is Lincoln town meeting. I don't know if we could run the table with 16. Do you have any other thoughts, Adam? No, you know, I'll add that this gets closer to getting those yeah. towns that are in question to voting. Yeah. Consistently, one of the areas that Boxborough and Sudbury had been upset about was this weighted voting. Yeah. They felt like if Arlington was getting the benefit of the new capital allocation, they didn't understand why we were going so far with weighted voting. So this will curb some of that, but given what the chairman just mentioned, I'm, I'm not positive that it will curb all of that. So it, it, it is a bit of a wait and see. <coughs> yeah. All right, so we still, or this, we don't have a motion, but Mr. Greeley, you look like you were ready to make one. Well, I, 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 I move favorable action, second. Favorable action. Yeah. Any further? And this is replacing the, uh, the previous yeah. vote. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Any further discussion? <coughs> oh, yeah, Diane? I just want to know that, is there any sense that we can vote this night that there could possibly be another change in the future? Or just, I mean, you recognize and you can't say it's absolute, yeah. but. No, just because okay. all 16 towns have to take the exact same vote, and Lincoln's going to put it in stone on Saturday. Okay, so then that's all. Okay. Yeah. Right. Joe? And I, I'll also say that the, there was a lot of discussion when, when the chair and I were out there about contingent votes and this and that, and the council there was really trying to dissuade people from, from uh, going that road. It makes it very messy and... Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? 5-0. All right, final votes and comments. Um, we have before us the draft from town council of articles 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 22, 25. Uh, special town meeting article two. And we have a revised vote for 17 that came by email today and is on the table. And so we're going to be voting on the like the language that's on the table as opposed to the one that came into the packet. Move approval. Second. All right. I we have a motion. We have a second. I had um, three questions. Um, first, Doug, on Article Thirteen, we use the language about the ACAC. That's before right. we actually do the ACAC. Are we sweating that or are we just gonna, like, how does that work? I, I'm not sweating it. What I would like to uh, try to do to resolve the poten uh, potential procedural concern is uh, see if Mr. Leone, and I reached out to John, I just haven't been able to talk to him yet, about whether we can just move the order of the articles. And that way, if the ACAC, uh, it seems extremely unlikely that yeah. the Cultural Commission will be denied the opportunity <laughs> to rename themselves. But were it to happen, then there, a simple substitute motion would basically resolve that issue. The, I did weigh um, several other alternatives, but they'd basically automatically be leaving unnecessary language in the bylaws, which seems, you know, uh, that A, could be problematic, and B, would seem just unnecessarily messy. Whoever is the future chair of this committee is going to have to worry about that, and I'm sure that they're listening very closely because they're going to be the ones who need to make the motion about postponement. Um, my second question was Article 17, and my only, so I think the new language gets us a little, 
closer, please. Let's see. The board found that the new, this last sentence of the first par paragraph. Further, the board found that the new winter usage-based billing developed in response to a previous town meeting vote and second water meter sufficiently addressed equity and billing concerns. My question for the board and for everybody else is, do we think that that sentence goes far enough or should we actually include what the proposed rate plan is or, because you know, this is, we're, so we're changing the way we're doing water billing. This is one of those chances we've got to educate both about what the new plan is and because, it, uh, to me at least, that's a very integral part of our vote. Now it was the three to two vote, which of course makes it tricky, but at the same time, I'm, uh, what, uh, yeah, Joe? You know, my thought on some of these things, I, I have the same thought on the, on the CTA article also, is that we might consider in our report having a, a, a small section of supplementary material. We've done that in the past. I know we had some supplementary material on, for example, road renaming um, issues. There was just, there was an appendix at, at the end, just a few pages. Just so if you wanted to have that type of material that, that provides that, that type of data, I think that might make sense. Diane? I would say <coughs> to your question, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the vote, mm -hmm. um, but right. I think it was just a throwaway sentence. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'll be guided by, the, 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 what I was gonna say is the people who, the three who voted in favor of it, right. perhaps what you're comfortable with. And the only question I would have to uh, my colleagues and to um, town council, if my right. colleagues would be amenable to it, is that just what I had for that sentence, that it just mirrors what um, was stated up above, um, so that it would say further the majority of the board found that. Right, sure, right, um, yep, right. Mm -hmm. If we could just add that. And it's ar it, it was already repeated up above, so it sort of implied. But I will be guided by what, since this is the comment by the majority of the board, um, but I would be happy to right. what Mr. Skinner suggested. So, um, Steve, are you comfortable with putting in an appendix about the I new rate structure? I think that makes sense, Okay, yeah. any particular strong objections? All right, so Doug, um, first off, uh, I think we should, we'll definitely accept what uh, Diane's change, which is where we talk in that, uh, in particular in the last sentence of the first paragraph where it says further the board, mm -hmm. we'll call that majority of the board because it wasn't the full in that case. I see it right here. Yeah, and then also let's, uh, Marie, this might end up more with you or Adam, I'm not sure, a combination of the two, I'm sure, putting in an appendix that describes the proposed rate structure for, uh, with the, that we are asking us to approve that yeah I um in principle if not in uh, in, in, in principle general. absolutely I I would want to think about whether or not it should be actually in the report or be supplementary material provided on the chairs prior to the actual debate I'm I would push for putting it in the report because uh, to me it is a it is a knowing that plan yeah. really drives this idea or not but I might actually what we might be able to do is put in what the selectmen that the board voted on last year and highlight uh, the winter proposal. We, the, the short answer is yes. Okay. Can I just suggest yep. that one possibility is uh, a simple statement at the end of this that says, or, or in parentheses that say, see additional reference material. Yep. Um, and that way we can yep. take some yep. time to select what it is. Okay. Uh, but but un with the understanding, with the clear understanding that it's reference material specifically meant to address that this issue came before town meeting previously, that the board thought that the better way to address it was, or the majority of the board thought that the better way to address it was a change in the billing, and that that billing is mm -hmm. now coming to fruition. I think I would actually even trim off the, because the fact that it was a related town meeting, I think you've already covered that. I think it should be really, we're just talking about what's the plan. Yes, I just mean, okay. I just meant to say that I understand where the board's coming from, and that we'll just say, see included reference material. Okay. So exhibit A or B or whatever. I've got three there. people who are nodding on that change, so I'm gonna go forward with that. Uh, Marie, are you comfortable? Okay. What, sorry? Excellent. All right, I had one more, and that was, I think it was Article 18, and I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah. Um, we, the, uh, Article 18, Lake Street signs, uh, we, second to last sentence, we, s we talk about, we've referred it to the proposed change to Ellington Building Department. Can we add a sentence there also that says that there's a neighborhood meeting scheduled, or, we, you know, we're also trying to, that we're encouraging a neighborhood meeting process, uh, because I know it ha it's happening. And it, it will have happened, it hasn't happened yet, but it will have happened by then. 
that's the, the yeah. And I think that that was an important part of what we were mm -hmm. contemplating, mm -hmm. so I wanted to mention that in the report. Of course. All right. Um, let's see. Did I actually get to the end of my list? Thank you all for. Yep, I'm done. Joe. Um, I just had just the really clerical changes on uh, Article 13. I already brought these to town council's attention. Um, under Section 2D, um, I think that should say town meeting member rather than town meeting membership. And under Section 3, um, there should be a comma between town and school. And um, I'm sorry, Joe, jo uh, Mr. Cure, what's? Uh, so it's page 2. Under Section 2. Okay. D, it says town meeting membership. I, I got that. I think you are, yeah, there should be town meeting member. And section three, the very last sentence of the proposed vote. So actually, can I clarify that point? I want to make sure that I have this correct, Mr. Kuro. Yes. Um, my understanding, based on my review of the comments, was that it was specifically public events and then town school and library programs. Because town we talking hyphen, uh, town comma school. Well, those have library. slightly different meanings. Uh, what, I, what I mean. Yes. Sorry, uh, do we? I, I can certainly amend it to just say town programs, but I also want to make it clear that we're talking about um, basically our public schools versus other schools. I believe that was the point that Ms. Mahan had made um, in the previous meeting that she wanted to make sure it was clear that we were talking about town schools and libraries and not, you know, uh, at least I construed it as not, you know, parochial or private school and library programs. That's why I'd phrased it that way, but I can certainly say town. I, I would recommend in that case town, uh, town school comma programs. public school and library programs. Okay. Yeah. Is that acceptable? Okay. Mm. And uh, just just lastly, the reason I was thinking about supplementary material was in in um, conjunction with the Community Preservation Act um, article because I, I found the manager's memo to be incredibly useful with with uh, projections of potential revenue that that can be brought in through the act and uh, mapping some of that against the, the existing five-year capital plan if the manager feels comfortable with uh, so let me propose that we the CPA advocates yeah. are well organized and uh, I was I was thinking that we that they could they were going to generate enough paper if you want to put uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to putting more items in yeah uh, but I think but some yeah I just I think that analysis is is, is very well done. And I, and so I do too, but I also think that it will have it will have evolved enough by then because yeah. it's more informed now than it was even a, a week ago. <coughs> yeah. Is that so? If you if you feel strongly, I'll. I'll I, I feel fairly strongly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, about, the, about the CPA specifically, the town manager's um, memo um, that prepared that talked about the capital budget going forward. I guess I might have a um, thought that it's a little bit wide of the town manager. I think there there's a document that's ready to hit the big screen. <laughs> uh, I, m uh, Mr. Cure did talk uh, with me about this earlier today and I, I would like to, if, if the board wants to put it in a supplementary material, have an opportunity to further yeah. scrutinize it before it goes right. on the big screen. I'm just like saying said. It where the, it was kind of crafted for at least as I understand it, the majority for a thin, thin com presentation, just for you to go back through with a reading eye towards, okay, now it's town meeting. So yeah, yeah, If absolutely. we can afford the town yeah. manager that. No, I don't, no, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Kevin, Steve, where are you on this one? Steve, the negative on that one. I, I, yeah, I have no real yeah, problem okay. with what that. Okay. Right. okay, Adam? Uh, if we're done with CPA. Uh, so I think we're gonna put this appendix in. Next, Adam. Uh, on uh, Article 25, revolving funds, Yes. Uh, last meeting we had provided uh, sort of the additional revolving fund detail. I don't know if any of the board members had an opportunity to look at that. And if, if you did and you liked it, uh, would you be willing to have that also included as supplementary material? I did and I liked it. Okay. I did and I liked it. Okay. I got three nods in my People are just well. tuning in right now, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, did I did and I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, who else has? Comment, correction, addition, subtraction. How are you, Doug? Mr. Chairman, may I just go through the list before we have a vote? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Article 13 with respect to the bylaw amendment for the Poet Laureate. Edit membership to read member. And then edit the last line, I believe, of Section 2 to note that it is town and public 
school and library programs. The second, so we're making three. a distinction for second town, three. comma, public school and library programs. Uh, Article 14 is okay as is. Yes. Article 15 is okay as is. Article 17, we're going to note um, the majority of the board um, and then also add Apologies. We're going to note that it's the majority of the board that's acting on with respect to the amended votes and comments on 17 mm -hmm. and um, also include an appendix mm -hmm. that attaches uh, the reference material like the rate structure. Um, then Article 18, we're going to mention the neighborhood meeting, um, which is currently scheduled for April. CPA, Article 22, we're going to include an appendix that includes some version of the town manager's report on that matter. And then finally, we're also going to include an appendix with respect to uh, the additional detail from the revolving funds, or did we want that directly in the vote and comment itself? I think that can be supplementary. supplementary. You want it supplementary? I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. Then I'm all set. Thank you very much. Maria, are you happy? Yeah. All right. Um, Diane made a motion in the very beginning of this, I think. No. No, you did not. I would pause. Kevin did. Kevin did. Uh, I uh, see. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that slipped off the short-term memory. Uh, no worries. <laughs> um, a lot done in my interim. Any further com uh, comments or changes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Five zero. Um, next up, we have correspondence received. Yes. Kevin. Uh, move receipt. Um, uh, but I'd also like to make a um, uh, Mr. Gilligan's request for a vote confirmation of appointment of deputy treasurer. I'd like to move that we table that to the meeting on April 14th. Uh, the request is for April 7th, and I'd like to move we table it and um, maybe that night make the appointment on April 14th. You know, my, my thinking is uh, we do have an election coming up. If there is a new treasurer, that new treasurer should have an opportunity more than just one day from the election uh, to meet with this particular candidate and you know whether or not she has different uh, thoughts or whatever, we, we don't know, but I just feel we should at least give uh, the opportunity of a week. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, Diane? Um, I just have one question. I'm not sure if the town manager knows um, the answer to it. Um, since we, we weren't involved in the interviewing process or anything like that, I know that uh, I believe Andrew Flanagan, is he deputy town manager? Correct. Deputy, deputy town man manager and Karen Malloy. Um, have you heard anything from them and, that from them and or anyone else on the um, that pushing it off a week would be any issue? I have not. Okay. Steve? I, I have a question as well. Is Mr. or is the candidate has he been, um, you know, in the loop on this whole process? As in, you know, right now that, you know, Theo will have to go through through us to, you know, be appointed. Officially. My understanding is that Karen Malloy, the HR director, has informed him to the to the process. Yes. Okay. I don't want him, you know, sitting in that room. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Uh, this is one of the one of those rare moments, Kevin, where you and I disagree. Uh, I um, and the, the reason I'm disagreeing is simply just that I, it, the treasurer had uh, tried to work with me on a calendar, and, and um, he had originally tried to do it earlier, and I persuaded him to do him later. And I think it would be inappropriate, and I, I want to respect the fact that I really worked with that with him, and I, I would prefer to do it on the 7th. That said, I do not think the 14th is a deal breaker, so I'm, uh, yeah, that's my. Yeah, uh, well, part of my reason for, or, yep. sorry, were you done talking no, about please, please. Part of my reason is we have been excluded from this process, in my, in my opinion, the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I have asked of Mr. Gilligan for a number of years now to distinguish for us uh, and, and I'm thinking maybe another week he might actually come up with this uh, to distinguish between us the roles and responsibilities of a deputy treasurer versus uh, the management uh, analyst uh, position. Um, and, and as I say, you know, we don't, who knows what's going to happen with the election, but, you know, it seems to me that uh, 
one more week, if there is a new treasurer, is a reasonable thing to ask for that person to take over that office and have time to, uh, I'm not, it, it really looks to me like they have found an excellent candidate. I, I, you know, I would have liked to have met him. It would have been nice of Mr. Gilligan to bring this individual before us to give us a chance uh, to meet this person. I'm sure he will on the night uh, that he's appointed. But even this, Mr. Gilligan just sent a letter to us. He's not even here tonight to talk to us about it. So uh, it's part of why I feel I, I feel I need another week uh, before making this appointment. But I respect you, sir, and if uh, you as chair feel that you've given the commitment of this board or something, I will back down. I, did, I would never attempt to make a commitment on behalf of the entire board. I appreciate it. Yeah. So I leave it to my colleagues. I move that we uh, table this until April 14th. Is the, uh, so we're, just so we're, we are going to come back and talk about the other two correspondence. At the moment, we are only talking about the treasurer's correspondence. Is right. there a further? Yeah. We have I'm a motion. Up to vote on yeah. it. Sorry, yeah. No, so it's just being clear, so we know what we're talking about. Um, is there any further comment or discussion on postponing or putting placing the assistant treasurer's appointment to April 14th? Was there a second? Um, I, 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 I seconded oh, okay, it. I seconded it. For discussion. Yes. I think it's, I'm going to support the motion. Joe. I'm on the horns of a dilemma right here, here because I do understand that, that, um, that this has been in process for some time and the candidate has been waiting. But the, the flip side is it is very true that do have an election coming up and if we have a new treasurer the very first day that that individual is on the job they would have a deputy that they would never had a chance to to, to meet or, or or talk to and as, as much as <laughs> none of us here really want to talk about it it's possible that there'll be a new person at one of these seats as well that very day coming right in and it's um, so I think I'm, go I'm going to support Mr. Greeley's motion, uh, although um, I recognize that we have put off this candidate a bit. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. all, okay, Mr. Greeley's motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? No. no. Three to two. All right, so we have placed it on the agenda for the 14th. Um, so we have two. Well, then move receipt, I mean, unless someone else has something on the. Just on the uh, monotony of Rocks Park, uh, I was, uh, Adam, I, I forwarded it to you. You had this a response. I confess, I have it's still sitting in my inbox. Is that something you want to share now? Yeah, or if, if you're comfortable Please, with that. Um, so uh, this uh, resident uh, issued this email in regards to two issues that were sort of related to one another down near monotony of Rocks Park. One was the need for a crosswalk to be repainted. The, the paint is completely faded, uh, crossing from Brantwood across Jason over to the park and also the fact that people are parking in the designated no parking area and around the crosswalk. So we had both DPW and APD take a look at it. Um, DPW, uh, once it warms up, will restripe it. However, the area this year is going to be repaved, uh, so it will get fresh tar and fresh paint and uh, probably even thermoplastic treatment, which is that longer lasting uh, treatment later this year. And when APD looked at it, uh, they felt that once the crosswalk was repainted that the parking would be, it would be much more clear that you're not supposed to be parking on the sidewalk and that they would also increase enforcement uh, in the upcoming weeks and months to make sure that people were not parking inappropriately there. So I, I think we have a good strategy to um, somewhat timely uh, address all the concerns raised. So what you're saying is you're not going to paint it before the snow falls on Tuesday night? <laughs> no, no, I hope not. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion for, uh, really, you made a motion to receive, right? And right, right. Diane, did you second it? Uh, sorry. Man, I'm super brain tonight. <laughs> Steve seconded it? All right. <laughs> uh, any further discussion on these two items? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Uh, so at this point, actually, what I would like to do is so there's two items left Mr. on Mr. Chairman, I, I think the gentleman might have been here for one of the pieces of correspondence. Oh, um, were you? Come on up. I apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and I have sometimes I get a little bit of tunnel vision. No, 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 I, I appreciate Welcome. it. Welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I, I'm Dr. Don Burstyn. I live on Hillsdale Road, and I walk my dog by the park. We don't go in a lot because there are a lot of dogs running around unleashed. Um, I think this problem is, you know, certainly the, um, uh, the crosswalk not being painted fading away has really exacerbated the problem. And so um, 
I've been told by the DPW that they, that is on the schedule, so that's very nice. In terms of the, the parking, I, I would, you know, I would appreciate signs there because, you know, you're not really supposed to park within 20 feet of an intersection now. And people do it constantly there, you know, and enforcement is, you know, just irritates people. Whereas signs, people seem to obey. There's signs on Jason Street, actually, that say no parking on either side of the entrance of the park. And, and for the most part, those are pretty much adhered to. I think, the, I think the problem is partially caused by the fact that the park now is known for a place where people can have their dogs go off leash any time, day or night. And, and that happens to the point now that if, if you go by there a lot, you'll, you'll notice that many people let their dogs out of the car off leash so they can run across the street into the park. And maybe that's perhaps why they're parking so close rather than you know, walking up to people. But so really anything you can do, you know, I, I walk with my dog, I think it's a dangerous situation with all the cars and all the traffic and such like that. And so I, I'd rather see prevention than enforcement. Thank, thank you for the letter and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for catching that for no me. Uh, so uh, we have uh, on the agenda, we have an executive session related to the town manager, and then we're going to come back to open session. But before we hit those agenda items, I want to do new business, if that's okay with the board. Uh, so it's going to be new business, then executive session. Then we will come out of executive session and take votes in public after that. Um, Marie, new business. You have to be here at 6.50 on April 1st, and you have to come to the selectman's office to pick up your ticket beforehand. And it is the Army Volunteer Band. Excellent. Which day? April 1st. Yeah. Doug? No new business. Thank you. Adam? Just a, a few pieces. First, I, I want to make the board aware um, that... Uh, Something's happening up at the Sims property, one of the final pieces that's been long in the works but is now coming together to allow final <coughs> certificates of occupancy to, to be issued at the Sims project uh, is the Sims conservation restriction. Uh, it's a very complex document that lays out the conservation protections for the park land and the Summer Street Woods and other undeveloped pieces of the parcel uh, that will be held by the Conservation Commission and the Arlington Land Trust but to be final and approved, uh, the Board of Selectmen needs to act on it. We weren't able to know that it would be ready to be on tonight's agenda, uh, but it is a very timely matter, so we want to ask the Board uh, to call a special meeting this Friday, I believe at 8.15 a.m., to act on it. And I do think there, uh, uh, Brian Rerig is here to talk to the Board a little bit tonight if the Board is interested in the, the details of that uh, conservation. But, um, uh, it's unfortunate the timing of it, but still, I think, important and, and, and long, long talked about, long understood as part of the overall Sims project. Brian, do you want to give us a two-minute preview of uh, what we're doing? So just, uh, so we are going to call um, a meeting of, of the Board of Selectmen for 8.15 on Friday uh, in the morning, 8.15 a.m. Uh, it'll be a business casual meeting. Uh, and the, which will enable us to, to take the votes before, uh, do the hearing and take the votes hopefully before the uh, vi meeting for the Japanese uh, uh, sister city visit. So Very that's good. the timing of that one. Brian. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> just to, to recap 15 years worth of work on this project, the, the conservation restriction that Adam is referring to is the, the formal document that protects permanently the open spaces of the site. And that includes both the, the two, now two public parks and the woods. And <coughs> by protects, uh, the, what, the, what the document accomplishes is to both um, extinguish development rights on those portions of the parcel and provide permanent rights to the public of access. So as, as, every, as, as you know, many of you have been involved with this project for a very, very long time. That, that one of the things that the town gets out of the project is two public parks operating under the rules of public parks but maintained forever at the expense of the development, not of the town. And, and that's a real accomplishment. So what has to happen on Friday 
is the, is the execution of the actual conservation restriction, which is the document that gets recorded. And I want to emphasize that this is a document that's been part of the public record since 2005. Um, the document's been thoroughly vetted both by you and by, um, by every other board involved. We are just finally at the point where it gets executed. And so it's a, it's a long established uh, document that is, uh, has only changed during that time to incorporate the second public park. And that happened with the land disposition um, agreement revision in 2012. Um, it's otherwise the document that's, uh, that's been on public record for, for all this time. And so we're finally able to execute it. It has to be executed by the, the grantors, that is the developers, both 360 and Sharper, by the Conservation Commission and the Land Trust who take responsibility for monitoring these things and protecting the rights of the public. And by you on behalf of the town and by the Secretary of Environmental Affairs on behalf of the state. So all of those things have to happen before it can be recorded and, uh, and be effective. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kevin? I, I just would like to, Brian, point out 15 years ago, this board set goals for that particular property, one of which was the maintaining of open, the same footprint of open space. And it's been a 15 year battle, and Brian's been there every single day of that battle with us. Thank you, Brian. And I can sing, Kevin, but right now I have a cold. So. <laughs> uh, can he play a piano? Oh, no. <laughs> Joe? And, and I want to publicly thank Brian and um, the Land Trust and the Conservation Commission working on this. I think nobody's been more involved in this, with the possible exception of Ms. Rowe, who's been right there with you as well, I think very much so. And, and possibly and you. And possi <laughs> well, I, I will admit, I, as, me, as most of you know, I'm a neighbor to this, to this site, and this is actually how I got involved in, in public affairs in Arlington was over some of the issues around this. And um, <clears throat> despite the burden that has truly been borne by the neighborhood in many respects, this is really a great um, amenity. Um, even though the, the deed has not been recorded and the conservation restriction has not been executed, the Vista Park is open. My kids frequently ask me to already to bring them over there. We walk the dog over there. And the views from that park, dare I say it, I don't think Willie Chappett's here, rival Robin's Farm. <laughs> they, they really do. Um, <laughs> You can, you can see most of the, the, um, the landmark buildings in the town from that, that site. It is absolutely um, extraordinary. And I think the, the great fortune that we had through the twists and turns of this project that we were able to add on the lower park uh, provides really an, an unim practically unimpeded um, expanse from the upper Vista Park through the lower down to the Summer Street Woods. Um, so thank you very much for this. Uh, this protection was, was really one of the most important things for the surrounding neighborhood. That, you know, and the, of course, the, um, the um, neighborhood protection uh, plan, which, which had a lot of interplay with, with the conservation restriction as well, the temporary and, and the permanent. Um, so uh, this neighbor of the project and this town leader, you know, very appreciative for all the work, which is great. All right, so Monday, or sorry, Friday, 8.15 a.m., we will revisit this one. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. What else do you have, Adam? Uh, very quickly, I want to let the board know, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, we've not yet had a hearing on the warrant article in regards to Venner Road, the 10 registered voter article. I want to let the board know I've been working with the proponents of the article to try to come to an agreement that is mutually agreeable and beneficial to the town and the current property owners. I've looked back and read the transcripts of the debate at town meeting from some seven years ago uh, in regards to that same issue um, and try to get an understanding of what the town concerns were. So uh, it's my hope that by the April 7th meeting I'll have a proposal back before the board uh, for action in regards to that warrant article. Uh, and then the last piece of new business, uh, I think you've all seen this, but for anybody watching, uh, the Red Sox World Series trophy will be in town hall this upcoming Saturday night uh, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, so people will be able to come down, uh, stand by the trophy, take a picture, and we have to give a big thanks to our state representative, Sean Garbley, for making that happen. Uh, he really took the initiative. He reached out to me. He reached out to the Red Sox, and he really pushed for us to do this. So um, I owe him a debt of gratitude for making it happen. So he gives us the mayor last Saturday night of Boston. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. And that's all I have. All right, Kevin. Uh, first, Doug is to show up Saturday evening and I want his picture taken with the red sign. <laughs> uh, would you please see to that, Mr. <laughs> 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 
Johnny Cage. Kissing you. With the David Ortiz jersey on. Since our vice chair and chair are candidates for re-election, I want to remind everybody uh, our meetings uh, Friday morning will be a very brief meeting and probably will not be televised. But remind people about April 5th, uh, we'll Saturday, uh, two weeks, right? will be election day in Arlington. And we do have contested races for the Board of Selectmen, Treasurer, and the School Committee and many other excellent candidates up for town meetings. So want to really encourage people to make sure that you do get out and uh, vote on April 5th. And since this is our last meeting uh, before that election, Mr. Chairman, I really want to congratulate you on the job you did this year. Thank you. As chairman, uh, you know, I really think you did an exceptional job. I, I think you probably copied the way I ran things <laughs> uh, prior to this. I'm not sure. But, uh, but no, sincerely, I, you know, I think a number of different uh, uh, issues have come up that I think you dealt with uh, very well and kept us on track the whole time. Thank you very much. And I know your right-hand woman here also was quite helpful as your vice chair. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Diane? Um, just two things. I, we did I have a moment of silence for several people that had, had passed recently, but I, I just wanted to bring forth because I know that um, notwithstanding other individuals, there will be things in the future. With the passing of Bill Armstrong, who not only um, did I have the opportunity to work with as uh, school capacity, m my elected official position. Um, he also was one of my mentors from the get-go, member of my church, the First Baptist Church. Um, he basically saw me from age 12 on up and helped me and groomed me um, for Arlington. Um, there was a very fitting um, service at First Baptist Church. His daughter, Jennifer, did quite a mo moving um, reflection, we call it reflections. Um, and I held it together to the very end until, I don't know if it's the Irish pr prayer or the Irish blessing, and so did she, where it says, may the road rise up to meet you. And she kept it together until then. And, and um, she told many, many stories of, of Bill Armstrong, Papa. And uh, there was something I just wanted to, I mean, you really have to have your glasses on to read this because there was so much, but it just cited that one of Bill's favorite say sayings was, if you throw a pedal into the pond, it still causes many ripples. And one of her sentiments were that, he did throw um, many pedals in, and the ripples are still to come. Um, just on behalf of the town, um, he, Bill's donated the money for all the flags year after year, the funding for the holiday lights. He supported our police and fire department with training and uh, specialized medical equipment. We all know he's helped local, public, and private schools, St. Agnes, Arlington Catholic, um, as well as um, there is a scholarship, Armstrong Family Scholarship Fund that has been set up um, that I've been told donations are, are really pouring in. And I just wanted to just give one quick reflection on him, him, something that I really miss a lot. I used to go in and meet with him several times during the year, only twice over probably the past 20 did I ask for something. But I would go in and he'd show me a new piece of equipment, sometimes walk me through a tour that I've already been through, but he was always so excited about it. And the very last thing he would always say to me, and I heard this from so many other people is, you know, Remember, if you hear of anybody that, that needs help in any way, you know, not, not just for Armstrong, please let me know. And I can't tell you how many people that have been helped by Bill Armstrong that don't know because he never, he was the kind that wanted to help. And I remember I, I got a little tiss tiss from him when um, he donated the money when I was coordinating <laughs> Pierce Field on the uh, scoreboard. Um, but I was determined, it's, it's, it's very small, and, and he looked at it and he said that that was okay. But there are so many people, not just in Arlington, in, in this area, Medford, everywhere, that um, Bill Armstrong helped, and they have no idea, and he wanted that way. So I'm going to miss his guidance and his warmth, and, and sometimes his one-liner on the way out. You know, if you get stuck somewhere, <laughs> let me know. But um, So I, I just wanted to note that. And I also say that, you know, down the road in the future, um, you know, working with the family and others, um, I'm sure we may be hearing of, you know, speaking to the family at the collation afterwards, but this isn't the time of, you know, I didn't want to go anything further than that because we're still in the press stages. And then the second thing, and, and I love Can I just add to that, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, I was in New York on business uh, during both the wake and, and during this service, but I am going to bring something before the board. We're talking about renaming Garden Street over here where Armstrong Ambulance Service is located. Mm -hmm. Bill That's Armstrong. the thing, I, yes. I've oh, already, you were just about to Rick say Gallagher. that. Sorry. No, I, okay. mean, I know it is yeah. a wonderful woman. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. sorry. If I'm okay. not here, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm sorry. But that's it. I just wanted to bring that 
I'm going to actually throw it out or you will or something. That's fine. And then um, the second thing was, um, I know I saw my colleague, the chair, um, yeah, the, at the Guns and Hoses, and the town manager was there. I'm not sure, I was w walking around so many times, um, who had their annual um, fundraiser for autism awareness. All the proceeds go to that charity. Um, it's a fun event. The only downside of it is, is the fire wins, the police loses, if the police win, the fire loses. Um, it was a great event. They raised lots and lots of money. It was six to four. This year, the police um, department prevailed. And I sat there this year thinking, this is the first year that I'm sitting in the stands and more than the majority of players are, are not so much friends of mine, but they're my friend's children mm. who would say, see who got that assist, see who made that goal. Um, but it's a great event, and it's really it's grown here in Arlington because it's so packed. And if anybody knows, if you go to that event, the adults are on one side, at, at a, you know, front center. If you go to the left and the right side down there, you t don't take your life in your own hands, but there's at least a good 40, 50 kids. They're like a swarm, yeah. and there's sort of like a dance to get through them. But it's really exciting to see, you know, a town event like that. And it gets, it gets not only the adults, but the kids to see our police and firefighters and, and dispatchers and EMS um, workers in a different light, as well as instilling here they are doing so much, but they're also giving back to the community, not just the autism community. So bravo to this year's winners, and I can't wait for again next year. Thank you. Joe, what's vice chair is a tough act to follow tonight with two such moving um, uh, pieces of new business. Uh, I, I really regret I wasn't able to attend the um, Guns and Hoses because that evening I was serving as uh, uh, master of ceremonies at an event at the Regent Theater. Um, it was the first annual Arlington Teen Video Contest, which was fantastic. The uh, ACMI. Um, <coughs> Uh, one of our local companies, Data Collaborative, and uh, the region co-sponsored this. It's going to be uh, broadcast on ACMI. You have to see some of these videos. They are absolutely top uh, notch. Um, one of my fellow judges was um, Amy Villay, the um, teen librarian here at, at the, um, the Robbins. Um, we had also some, some musicians from the high school. So having that, having guns and hoses go on the same night, I and mean, we talk a lot in the Youth Health and Safety Coalition about trying to have constructive things that the, the youth can do um, at, at night, and these are a couple of um, great opportunities. Um, it was a very, very busy weekend. Um, it, Mr. Greeley stole some of my thunder. I wanted to thank the chair also for always being so respectful to fellow members and to members of the public and for his excellent leadership yesterday of our team with himself, myself, and Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, we, had, uh, we represented you all on the team uh, quizness as usual. And were it not for the chair and his knowledge of uh, Nikola Tesla, Doctor Who, and his uh, leadership in the engineering design challenge, I think we would have really been sunk. We didn't advance, but we would have been sunk without. So thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair, and I good luck. Coming in second in your, like, in your flight, may actually be about perfect. You talked about how good you were and you almost made it. You, you, you know, final. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> and absolutely. absolutely. By a quarter inch, we missed advancing to the final. Isn't that terrible? Absolutely. So there's another big family-friendly event that was going on. And there was uh, one other. And I, I um, want to give a very heartfelt um, thank you to the Recreation Department. On uh, Saturday night, I attended my ninth and final daddy-daughter dance. My, my daughter has put me on notice that when she goes to middle school, it's, it's over. I've gone every single year for nine years. It is a, a wonderful um, a, event. So much of the community comes out. It is a lot like a middle school dance where a lot of the girls go off with um, with their friends and the guys are cooling their heels along the walls. <laughs> My daughter, I'm happy to say, because she understood the significance of this, she, she stuck with me to the, to the bitter end. She said some of those dads looked sad. But I want to thank the Recreation Department for doing this every year. It is, it is such uh, just a great bonding experience, I think, for fathers and, and, um, and daughters. I know some of us have, have daughters, yeah, so we understand, we understand this. My daughter's not 20, but when I went, she wouldn't dance with me. We did dance once. Yeah. She, she just played on the, there were mats over in the corner that she and I <laughs> 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 
Um, I want to mention two upcoming events. Um, <clears throat> our uh, town recycling coordinator, um, Charlotte Milan, asked me if I could give a plug for Echo Fest, which is this Saturday. I think it's uh, 10 to 2, if I'm not mistaken, here in the town hall. But there is also um, uh, the Trash Formations Contest, which is to make a, a piece of art from recyclables. And I think that Thursday is the deadline. The details are on the, um, the website, if anybody's still chomping at the bit for that. And that's, that's for you. Um, as well. And on uh, April 3rd, um, the next master plan working paper on economic development will be presented at 7.30 at the Senior Center. That was supposed to be last Thursday, but it was moved because of uh, Candidates Night. And just one last item. I have to say the most <coughs> amusing thing I've ever gotten in the packet <coughs> was, believe it or not, Public Works Magazine. So we think we've had difficulties with the Mass Ave project. Uh, you know, <coughs> getting it through and all of this. <coughs> I, I was uh, relieved to read this. Environmentalists in Iceland are protesting a proposed road project near the capital of Reykjavik because they fear construction would endanger the habitats of elves. Protesters say the construction would leave elves homeless or killed. It even might destroy an elven church said to be tucked away in the rocky terrain. And, and that's, you read it right here in Public Works magazine. So uh, if you haven't read it, catch, out the, catch the article. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if they another connotation to it, or if they, they No, no, they, they, they actually say that uh, polls show that more than half of Iceland's population believe in the existence of elves, also called huldafolk or hidden folk by the country's citizens. Wow. I didn't half their population? <laughs> Um, well, I think everyone's going to cover it tonight. Uh, no new business. Yeah, I started with five items, <laughs> but uh, uh, we, th I Get definitely, wrong, I heard them all get knocked off uh, one by one. Um, I have enjoyed being chair of mentor, um, and thank you all for your support and your help, and uh, that which leads us, of course, to, I do get one last crack at it for 15 minutes on Friday. I just want to remind people it is 15, <laughs> and that election day is <coughs> April 5th. And so I, there's a, a plenty, of not just uh, the three contested ballots, but a number of town meetings. I've, I've seen more signs out for town meeting members than I ever have before. I, I don't know if anyone else has seen that. All right, so we have reached the end of new business. And so we've got an executive session coming up. And so just so people know what the plan is here, we're going into executive session without the town manager to discuss negotiations with the town manager. If necessary, we'll come out for the purposes of getting town manager to negotiate with him. And then, barring the unexpected, we will then come out fully and take a number of votes publicly. So don't go too far, is I think the, the message there. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. I move to go, in to go into executive session to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to conduct negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically the town manager. Second. So the board will come out oh. of executive session for purposes of taking public vote. We have second. a motion. We have a second. Uh, Mr. Kapalka, would you poll the board, please? Yes. 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 So we're going to executive session. We're going to keep Doug and Marie.
Welcome back. Definitely great to see you. All right, so we are back from executive session. Uh, we did not negotiate with the town manager. It was just the board and Doug and Marie, and then we voted and we came out of executive session. Mr. Greeley. In accordance with section 2A of the town manager's employment agreement with the town of Arlington, I move that the salary for the town manager, right, am I supposed to say this out loud? That the salary for the town manager for contract year three, covering the period from February 24th, 2014, to February 23rd, 2015, be $164,383. All right, and so that represents a 2% increase over his previous salary, and just so we're clear on those dates that that is retroactive to last month. Any, oh, and I should also just say that, uh, just to remind people, uh, we did the review of the manager and he did, and, but like as in we all did a review of the manager and we found that he was doing an excellent job, which is why we're giving him a raise. Most excellent. <laughs> which is why we're giving him a raise. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Five zero. All right, next up. Um, do you want to come back? Move to appoint Adam Chapterlain as town manager for a successive three-year term, February 24th, 2015, through February 23rd, 2018. Second. So a motion and a second. Uh, so this, of course, has the effect, it, uh, our town manager act very clearly specifies that there shall be three-year terms, and Adam is two years and a bit into one term, and we're appointing him for another term at the end of that. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Who's next? Jack? Um, sure. Uh, move to approve the attached employment agreement with Adam Chaplain covering the term from February 25th, 2015 through February 23rd, 2018 and to authorize the chair of the Board of Selectmen to execute this employment agreement on behalf of the town of Arlington. We have a motion to second. So this uh, this board gave me permission to negotiate with Adam um, a little bit more, than just about a month ago. And over the month, or past month, Adam and I with the outside town council have negotiated, and the, the board has just met in the executive session and reviewed the negotiated position is hap or is about to say that it's happy with it <laughs> and executes it. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Five zero. Adam, you're on for another three years. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, after the evaluation process, I, I greatly, greatly enjoy working for Arlington. I greatly enjoy working for the board, and I really appreciate the board's um, effort in this. They're uh, enacting an approval of this tonight, and I look forward to continued service to the town. Thank awesome. you very much. Fantastic. Diane. Just a quick thank. Um, I want to thank the chairman for taking on this Herculean task. Um, I, you know, living up to the standards of previous chairs, Mr. <coughs> Greeley and I um, have set. Um, I do want to commend. Um, also the town manager in terms of uh, the, the process and what he brought to the table and what he was willing to s make as a suggestion, especially around um, his compensation and raise. Um, um, I think it's a, a good testament to what you're going to do for us and what we you know, have offered our other town employees and I really think you might have been able to get a little bit more but um, you really wanted to set a bar a certain way and I, and I do appreciate that. You do do an awful lot for the town of Arlington. And all the predictions that everybody had for you in terms of your tenure, despite your youth, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, have certainly come to that and surpassed that. And I know I certainly enjoyed um, working with you and look forward to in whatever capacity in the future. And if the um, chairman could also extend to, I believe it's Penny Valerio, our heartfelt thanks for once again, um, she's a tri tried, proven and tried um, legal counsel as well as she sort of brings her added benefit being involved in book and book line politics way back in the day. Um, each and every time we've had to utilize her services, she's very professional, very succinct, um, does her job and, and does everything that she needs to do and sometimes a bit more and I'm grateful that she has stayed with us for s oh so many years because I think she could have the opportunity to have kept this along to a, an associate or other but I think she has an affinity to working with us here in Arlington and I definitely I didn't, even, I, did, I didn't even tell you. She called me at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon to do this. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. Yeah. Kevin? Yeah, when, you know, I, uh, 
Uh, I, w I once served with a, with a town manager that would come to us on, under new business. He'd recommend new insurance rates and he'd want to vote that night. <laughs> <laughs> and I was scared of him, but, <laughs> but I literally. I can't imagine who that was. <laughs> but, but that is so, and, and uh, he was an excellent town manager, but uh, Adam wouldn't even think of such a thing uh, to behave in such a way. Uh, he makes sure that he communicates. I can speak only for myself, but I know from each of you that he's uh, in the same way, that, uh, you know, uh, that he communicates with us what his plans are. He insists, I don't know, the public might not know this, he insists that we review and set goals and, and measure him uh, and, make, and make sure that we can uh, provide evidence to the quality of work that, that he has done for us. Uh, we're just very, very lucky to have you and you've done an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine though insurance rates under new business? No. No, no materials. <laughs> no materials. In All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really did enjoy it a lot. I actually have a few notes too. Did you? Yeah. Oh, certainly cool. So it was chance. You and I should have a conversation. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No. All right. Okay. I thought you. Had to, uh, trying to teach you how to call an Uh, I was just showing you.